Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Today I wanted to go over a few terms that everyone should know. At least I think they should know, and, and you should really know how to tell the difference, um, especially if you're a network engineer. So the first very abused term is the cloud. Uh, what is the cloud? Okay, so to explain what the cloud is, I have to tell you where it came from, okay? So, back when I was a boy, <laughs> just kidding, so, you know, in the 90s, when you're doing a whiteboard drawing, you know, you're a network engineer, you're doing a whiteboard drawing, you're, you're uh, you know, saying, okay, well, you know, you've got your routers, um, Actually, they're probably more round. So you got your routers, right? You got your switches, right? And a lot of times people will do this, but that's, these are supposed to be arrows. And your switches go like this. And um, that's another thing. You got your muxes. And, um, Oh, oh, you got your CPE devices, which is your telephones. You know, you got your, your laptops or computers. And you can see all this stuff is pretty much, you know, they're just triangles, squares, rectangles, and circles. Um, so when you're, you know, when you're drawing a network, let's say you're, you're talking about, you know, you say, okay, well, We've got a, uh, a router here, and it's, it's talking to a switch, and, and then it's coming down here, and it's hitting this customer on a CPE device. And some people draw customers as boxes and, you know, just stand for buildings, but we usually just drew telephones. We were in the telephone business, right? And let's say this router had to um, talk Let's say this guy was in Dallas. Let's say I needed to talk to someone in New York, right? Or, you know, it was connected to somebody in New York, and, you know, and it also went through another switch and down to a CPE device. And really, I guess we should, since I'm talking data, let me just put computers here instead of telephones. I don't want to confuse everybody. All right, that was pretty simple to draw. Well, this dotted line right here is not an acceptable, because, so when you're in a telecom company, uh, you, you're going to have, you know, just all kinds of equipment between Dallas and New York. You might be on a, a sonnet ring, you know, you, who knows what network equipment you're going to be traversing to get to this, right? And uh, and dotted line, I don't remember off the top of my head, but dotted line, um, well, I don't remember what dotted line means, but dotted line is not acceptable. And um, so we needed something to, you know, represent the rest of the network, right? And so, you know, you can't use a circle, circles used, uh, squares used, bunch of squares are used, um, you know, you, you could try to draw a star, but, you know, network engineers suck at drawing, and uh, plus it's not fast. Um, so, so what else is there, you know? So, so someone came up with the idea, I don't know who it was or where, what company it came from, but they started drawing a cloud. And that represented everything else. So you have, so we're, we're discussing this, and we're discussing this, and this represents just pretty much everything else. And um, so, and we would do, we would stick them everywhere, you know. So, so really, if you think about this, this is, this is, um, this is in the uh, uh, network side of the, of the network, right? And so then you'd have to go through you know, another IP network. So this would be your um, your network equipment, 
or network edge, if you will. And then it came down, and then you had it came through who, whatever some some cloud <laughs> equipment, some equipment that we don't know what it is, but we know it's in there, so we represent it with a cloud. And then it comes down to the CPE, which is the customer premise equipment, right? And then it's going to computer, right? So we would just pop clouds in to everywhere we wanted to represent the rest of the network, okay? And that was easy enough. And, and, and I'll tell you who I really think invented the cloud uh, symbol was Microsoft even though they probably don't know it. And the reason why is because if you go into Microsoft Word and look at all the different symbols that are in there, um, I mean, you've got squares, circles, I mean, they have call-out boxes and some other silly things, but, but besides that, they have the cloud. And you could put text in that cloud. So you could say, okay, well, this is the, the uh, backbone network, right? All right. Usually, I just wrote IP. You know, it's the IP network, and um, so, and that's how the cloud was born. It was just something network engineers used to stand for the rest of the network. Now, I don't know what marketing guy got a hold of it or girl got a hold of it and decided that the cloud was some new cool marketing term. But that's why everyone's confused with it, because what does a cloud mean? Okay, so you got a cloud. Now let's say you've got your laptop here, right? Let's see if I can draw a laptop. I used to be able to do this. Yeah. Okay, and it's tied to the cloud. All right. What does this mean? Well, the only thing it really means is that, let's say you have... Um, something on cloud storage, right? So something is stored in the cloud. The only thing that means is that means it's just not stored on your laptop. It, who knows where it's stored? It's, it's in the network somewhere. It doesn't even have to be in the network. It's probably, you know, going through the IP network, it's in some server somewhere. So is it really in the cloud? Well, no, if you think of the cloud as being, um, you know, telecom gear, probably not, unless it's a, you know, some telecom server you're storing it on, or it's in a data center owned by a telecom server. So anyway, so, so what is the definition? What, is, what does it mean to, to have something in the cloud? Well, you don't know. It, it means it's just not stored uh, locally on your computer. That's the only thing it means. Because really, there is no cloud. And another thing, this drives me a little bit nuts. Cloud does not equal VMs, or virtual machines. This, I hear this all the time. People are talking about uh, virtual machines and they're saying cloud. Or they're, or they're saying cloud and or saying virtual machines and they mean cloud. But usually it's the other way around. Usually they're, they're talking about virtual machines and they're saying cloud. It's like, oh, I got three cloud servers. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> you have three virtual machines. Unless you truly have three servers that are in a telecom network somewhere, uh, then okay, well, they're in a the cloud. And uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, back in the in the 90s, before some marketing guy got a hold of cloud, um, we used to just call it offsite storage. So if you had a computer here, right, and you wanted to, I hate to draw the cloud again, but I'm going to, and you wanted to store it in a server, you know, in case your building burnt down. Uh, all your data to get lost. We used to just call that off-site storage. And now they call it cloud storage. So anyway, don't let that confuse you. But back to the virtual machines. And um, it's a virtual machine. All right. Okay, so what is a virtual machine? Well, 
first let's talk about what a machine is. Okay, this is a laptop computer, right? It's a machine. It has one operating system in it. It's Windows 7 or something like that, or I forget. Anyway, um, so it, so I have a Windows 7 laptop, right? That's one machine, and it's not virtual. You can see it's very real. Well, let's say I want to run uh, Linux, for instance. Well, it used to be the only way you could put it on here is you would format the hard drive and install Linux on it. And then you had a Linux laptop. Uh, but it was still a physical device. It wasn't a virtual device. And then came along uh, dual boot, where you could install, I could still have my Windows 7 on here, and in another partition on the hard drive, I could also run Linux. So when it booted up, it would just ask you, do you want Windows or do you want Linux, right? And so then you could basically run two different operating systems on one physical device, right? Well, some smart person decided, well, you know, if you can dual boot two operating systems, why can't you dual boot four or eight or 50? I mean, who cares, right? And, and then they, they went a little bit further with it. So, okay, well, great. We can boot all these different operating systems, but I want to run them both at the same time, right? So then they started making it to where I can run my Windows 7 and my Linux operating system both at the same time, and all I have to do is hit a button to switch in between them, right? And that was very handy. And then they could, and they made it to where you could run 50 operating, or 50 um, systems at the same time, or 50, I want, I want to say operating systems, but you could run 50, you know, if you had 25 Windows 7s and 25 Linux um, operating systems installed, you could run them all at the same time. And those are virtual, right? So back to, okay, we got the physical PC. Let's say it's dual booted. In other words, there's an operating, it, when it boots up, it asks, do you want to run Windows 7 or Linux? And you could pick. But now we've made it, and that is still not virtual. What, made, what makes it virtual is when, when you turn this thing on, the Windows 7 operating system boots up and the Linux system boots up as well, right? And then it's, it's, you have two basically virtual computers or two operating systems running on one computer. And those, those two operating systems that are running are the virtual machines. They're just called, they, you know, they, they have all the same hardware drivers, everything. They're just sharing the same hardware, right? So that's a, that's a virtual machine. And now you can see why cloud does not equal virtual machine because I could put many virtual machines on this and it is not a cloud for sure. Okay, last but not least, this is a pretty new one, IoT. And as an everyday Joe, do you need to know what IoT means? Eh, who knows? It doesn't matter. I, I mean, it would be good to know. Network engineers should know it. Um, but I have ran into some that had no idea what it means. And so I thought I would talk about it, and it stands for the Internet of things. And you're going, you know, what the hell is that? And granted, it is a stupid name for an industry. Um, I, I, I don't know who coined the phrase, probably some marketing guy again, I, I don't know. But anyway, it is what it is. And, uh, and what is the Internet of Things? Well, uh, there's a lot of confusion with that, even in the industry. So if you go to the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, there are hordes 
of people peddling Internet of Things devices. So what are they? Uh, there is, as far as I know, there is no real strict definition of uh, what defines an Internet of Things devices. So I'm going to give you some examples. If your toaster is hooked up to the Internet, it is an Internet of Things device or IoT device. If your refrigerator is hooked up to the internet, it is an IoT device. If your thermostat is hooked up to the internet, it is an IoT device. If, um, and then there's, then they have subcategories like sensors and or they've got business IoT devices where, where they're monitoring um, uh, sensors and sending that data to some server over the internet and so they'll be like monitoring you know levels in a tank or or whatever industry industry things they need to monitor they'll they'll connect these little devices to you know their equipment and monitor it over the internet and those are internet of things devices as well um, the device I'm building my clock. By the way, isn't this beautiful? This is uh, uh, burl maple, or burl. I'm sorry, burl walnut. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, I digress. But uh, it's basically a uh, smart alarm clock, and I hate to use smart. That's a whole other term that's been beaten to death. But um, it's a let's just call it a high-end alarm clock, okay? And, uh, but you know, it's controlled, you can control it over the internet, it's also, you know, you can control it with your phone, you can control it with your PC, but basically it's connected to the internet, or you can access it in China if you want to. So, um, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's connected, it's, it is an Internet of Things device. So, do you need to know this? Yeah, probably, because the Internet of Things is coming. And, and as stupid as the name sounds, um, I've seen uh, people that actually connected a spatula to the internet. So as you're flipping your, your pancakes over or whatever with your, your IOT spatula, you can monitor the temperature of your food <coughs> excuse me, with your phone. And so, so it is coming, and, and that, what, that is what IoT is, is Internet of Things, and, and it's coming. So anyway, that's about it. Those are the, the three terms I wanted to go over, and I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll see you later.